I'll have a completely different perspective from all of the presentations above. Uh, I work as an archaeologist and um, archaeological illustrator since 2004. Um, I worked as a researcher as well, uh, mostly in post-medieval uh, themes. And since 2011 that I, I teach archaeological illustration as well uh, in Portugal, both in Lisbon and in the Aveiro University. Um, and with that background, I'm now starting my PhD in uh, a project that I am now trying to pr present to you. Um, and as the founder of the National Museum of Archaeology, Professor Leite Vasconcelos did back in 1913 when he wrote uh, from Campolith to Melrose. Uh, also, now I came to Lisbon, from Lisbon to Edinburgh. <laughs> to present you this. Um, I would like to thank the conference members, especially the organizer, organizers of the session, uh, and also the National Museum of Archaeology for all the support they have provided. Uh, and this presentation is a project funded by the National Research Foundation. Um, the National Museum of Archaeology began um, as Portugal, Portuguese Ethnological Museum in 1893 and opened to the public in the current location in Mosteiro dos Jerónimos in Lisbon in 1906. Uh, the collection of archaeological illustration of this institution dates back to the late 19th centuries uh, and we consider it together uh, to be of great interest to use such collection as a starting point to contribute to the history of the museum itself, along with the development of archaeological drawing in Portugal. Um, but what is archaeological illustration and what will be the main source of our work? So as we all know, there are sub several types of archaeological in in illustration, uh, field drawings, car car charts, maps, artifact drawings, rock art surveys, reconstructions. Uh, what we will not consider as graphic illustration will be um, a variable graphic representations that help us interpret uh, the archaeological texts, such as tables, graphics, diagrams, photography. We consider it to be visual communication, but not archaeological drawing or not archaeological illustration. So, um, the first articles to address the role of illustration dating back to the late 1960s, early 1970s. Um, the UK has a great um, work done on this field, obviously. Uh, since 1978, the Association of Archaeological Illustrators and Surveyors, um, a lot of work published also in France and then uh, Belgium as well. But if you go to Portugal, the first work uh, addressing archaeological illustration dates back to 1999. <laughs> and even so, uh, even those are very few of them, only three uh, theses uh, regarding this uh, theme uh, were defended so far, and all master theses, none is PhD theses. Two of them presented into a fine art um, school, not in archaeology. Only one in, um, in the School of Archaeology, and that one which deals with the transition to the dig new digital um, technologies, and none of them relating to the history and to the evolution of the archaeological drawings, uh, of the archaeological illustration. So for that, we, we believed that studying the, this collection of drawings and the people who made them uh, is very important to determine the value of the figure of, uh, of the illustrator in archaeology, a figure that is so often re relegated to the background uh, or even consigned to oblivion in publications mainly in Portugal and the other countries. I am not there, <laughs> but uh, 
into it, uh, but without which making archaeology would not be possible. Um, so which methodology are we trying to apply? Um, the identification of the occurrences. Um, there are in the National Museum uh, in Lisbon, there are two, two realities. Um, of all separate documents, such as those included in the personal archive of José Leite Vasconcelos, uh, as well as others, and compiled drawings and albums corresponding to the production of certain artists, uh, such as Guilherme Gamayer, Saavedra Machado, I'll talk about them afterwards. Uh, those um, albums were made and compiled since the 1910 the decades. Afterwards, we'll uh, make a um, thorough dig digitalization of the collections uh, via uh, photography uh, that will afterwards be treated. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the first one is the photography that was collected. Afterwards, they all have the same scale and same presentation. Uh, description according to several parameters we decided to be uh, interesting and needed for our uh, research. Uh, wait, sorry. Afterwards, we tried to make the biography of the drawing. So we have the drawing itself. Afterwards, the ancient number and the current number, uh, which are attributed to that object in the museum, and the correspondence to the artifact in the um, digital recording uh, matrix that already exists for the museum. Uh, here we can see one of the drawings, the ancient number, and through that we can uh, find the, sorry, the original certificate of incorporation in the museum from the early 19th century. Also, we're trying to identify the different sorts of paper used, some of which are possible to identify the, the brands, like this one from Germany, uh, those are Portuguese, different ones. Afterwards, trying to uh, draft the biography of the authors. So far, until the fifth, the decade of the nineteen uh, fifties, we have already um, gathered those uh, illustrators, some of those artworks. Jorge Colas, who worked from nineteen o two to nineteen o three, he mainly worked with, uh, sorry, uh, like the goose. Fe uh, feather? Quill. Yeah, quill. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, and um, Indian ink. Yeah. Another one, Guillermo Gamayru, worked from 1903 to 1909 when he left the service due to mental illness, which he, of which he, he then died in the Lisbon Asylum. Uh, but he was an exquisite draftsman and watercolorist which usually uh, signed his work. So. Another, Stuart Carvalhais, he only worked in the museum for two months, but he was a very con uh, known artist in Portugal, um, mainly as a painter, dressman, illustrator, caricaturist, uh, artist, photographer, and even cinema. Uh, another artist, Saavedra Machado, from 1912 to 1920. Uh, also, uh, he had a course of fine art uh, academy. He was a painter, sculptor, poet, playwright, uh, wrote for several magazines. Uh, he was a director of art uh, magazines, organized exhibitions, uh, and he, there's this magnificent um, frame uh, that was brought to with uh, watercolors of uh, pieces of the museum that was um, brought to Rio de Janeiro to the national to the international exhibition of 
uh, 1922-23, and from which he gained, uh, he was awarded with a silver medal uh, for the representations. Another one worked there for 30 years. Uh, prior to being a draftsman in the museum, he worked in a bank after. <laughs> <laughs> and then he left and worked as a draftman in uh, the museum for 30 years. Um, also uh, with multiple national and international exhibition, uh, exhibitions, uh, worked in newspapers. Uh, and he also signed his paintings. A little bit later, from 55 to 57, which also signed and uh, stamped the, the date on these drawings. Um, this one uh, was also um, established a uh, sculpture, internationally and nationally recognized, with a lot of sculptures in many cities in Portugal. Uh, so from what we've seen, until this moment, there, um, there were real artists in the real exception of the world. They didn't do this just in archaeology. They didn't do this just in the museum. Uh, they worked. They were. Um, they had a, several layers of, <laughs> of artsmen uh, throughout the country. Another, the first uh, nucleus that we studied was the Stasio da Vega, which is uh, the oldest set of drawings held by the museum, dating back to the 1880s. Uh, it was bought uh, for the museum after the death of this archaeologist, um, unlike the remaining collection, which was all made in the museum by um, their staff. So the this is one of the um, pioneers of the Portuguese archaeology. We also identified uh, uh, several um, artists who used, who made those drawings. This one is uh, from his wife, uh, which was a French lady and made beautiful watercolors. Those are from 1882, if I'm not um, mistaken. They're all uh, signed. OK, now I'm just finishing. Uh, this one is quite interesting because it's an archaeological site. Uh, this is the, um, the drawing made in 1882, and those are other excavations that were made in the 20 years ago and 10 years ago. And here we can see the evolution of the coastline. So most of the things that were excavated and registered back then um, have now disappeared with um, the shore uh, being uh, much deeper than it was. Other examples from another um, draftsman. This one is uh, cool because he he was the owner of two uh, papers and a typography. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, um, printing. A uh, printing in. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> in um, in Portugal as well. This one in Lenham, uh, in a Lenham shed. All of. This one is like the, um, the manuscript with some uh, notes that uh, the archaeologist made just to, to illustrate the, the things he was trying to describe. And through this uh, nucleus, we already could make some assumptions uh, that were already synthesized, like the authors, type of sports, the execution techniques, uh, the quality, so is final art, sketch, preparatory work, type of design, mentioned dates, archaeological sites, historical period, um, and some of the problematics that we hope to uh, find some answers when we can finish our work. 
which is only in the beginning. And we believe that these drawings are in themselves uh, objects of study that must be preserved. Uh, all of the information compiled and digital collection and catalogs uh, will be available in the museum, uh, expanding its digital archives, helping to better understand and dis disseminate the collection, uh, as well as enabling its uh, consultation and also safeguarding the originals from constant handling and ultimately moving from pencil to, to pixel, thus perpetuating this knowledge. Thank you. Thank you.